Reason users, this is a tutorial about writing remote files. Those are the files that connect your physical controller to Reason's virtual devices. And they're easy to edit. It's not computer programming. What's really cool right now is the new Combinator has a possibility of 32 knobs. And most of the devices as defined right now are not taking full advantage of that. I'm going to show you how to rewrite this file specifically for the Combinator. But what you learn here, you could also use in other places as well. So if you're interested in getting more use out of connecting more Combinator stuff, then follow along. So in case you aren't sure about what I'm talking about, when I spin this knob here, I've connected this to, this is a mixer device on eight channel mixer on the Combinator. So dials one through eight, uh, change those faders one through eight. My buttons I have hooked up to the mutes, which are then connected to a mixer right there. This is just an example of what you can do, uh, but, and it permanently attaches your device to the combinator. So now let's get into how you actually facilitate doing this, having it on your system. You need a text editor and know how to run it as administrator. I use TextPad. So then you're going to browse to program files, propeller head, reason 12, remote and default maps, something similar in Mac. You get to the point where you have default maps. Here you're gonna have all your brands listed. Uh, your brand will be listed. I use Novation for me. Reason sometimes overwrites the files that you, if you make the changes to them. So if I rewrite, uh, I would save a copy of it. So let's go ahead and now talk about uh, what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take a look at what a remote file looks like. It's just a text file uh, and you type things in, make changes and then activate them in Reason. If it works, that's great. If it doesn't, then you just turn it off and make un and undo them. Just to know is that empty spaces don't mean anything. I could put 10 empty spaces in here. It doesn't care. And the other thing is that these two characters here are a comment opener character. So if you want to put the date that you changed it in there, you put those in and you put in what you're looking at here now is scope is a word that the group of things in between each scope is related to a single virtual device. And so you can see that starts the word scope and it's the combinator. You're not going to change that part of it. And then you can see where the combinator ends is where the next word scope is. I use this device called a Hamo Neutral. That is a device and everything that is in between here is related to that and then I've got it defined for the mixer. What it does is you're writing how the controls, the physical controls on your device react with the virtual devices. So the syntax works like this, is that it always says map as the first thing, they're tab separated, but you can use this by copying and pasting. And then this word is what your device defines its physical self as. We'll show you how to actually find out what that is. And this is how Reason defines a control on this. So in the combinator with rotary one, it's gonna be controlled by my physical knob one, Rotary 2 is going to be controlled by my physical knob 2. And then we go down and we define all of the stuff that we want to for a combinator in particular with the physical device we're using. Now I'm going to show you how to activate the changes in the remote file that you've made. So this is the reason preferences window. Your device would be listed. And so there's a checkbox that's right here. It says use with reason. You turn it on and you turn it off and this reloads your remote file. If you get a green checkbox here, it means you did it right. If you get a red X, it means you did some error. Uh, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually make an error. If there are two things that are defined as the same, two different knobs control the same uh, remote device. So I set these both to do rotary one and check and uncheck. And you'll see there's a red X. So it's as easy as doing this, is going back and making the change back to this. Control S to save it again, go back to the preferences and then reload by checking and unchecking and we are good to go. So now I'm gonna show you how to know that this is called knob one in here. So in Reason, when you right click on any control on any device, so you're not gonna see the right click menu but there's an item in it that says edit remote override mapping, and you should see this window that shows up. And now when I touch any of these controls, this second one, you'll notice that it changes. I'm on knob four, five, six. When I hit the buttons, then they change to the word button. So those words there correspond exactly with the uh, capitalization and the proper numeration that I use in here. Knob zero, one through 16 and button zero, one through button 
0.08. Let's talk about how to know what the dials on the virtual device are. The combinator is very specific and how Reason calls the combinator is very easy actually. It's rotary 1 through rotary 32 if you have that for anything that's either a slider or a rotary on the combinator. They're called button one through, I don't know, I can't remember if it has 32 or, eight, or 16 because I only have eight of them, but it uses the letter capital B, space, no zeros before, and they're called buttons, right? And so what we're talking about there is we're talking about anything here that these are all rotaries. This is a rotary... Um, the, whether, it's a, whether it's displaying as a rotary or as a slider, it's actually called rotary. And the buttons are this. As we're looking at this right now, I'll talk about the difference between this and other devices. So the way that you use for other devices is you hover over uh, the device and what is any of the controls on any of the devices is what shows up in yellow. So if I wanted to map something to this, I would write with capitals done the way it is, channel three, aux one, send. Not the colon zero, that's actually a number of the what it's currently set to. So you don't do that, but everything up to the colon there. This is for all older devices, any device, aside from the combinator. I'll show you, you can see on my mixer is that I've got this propeller heads mixer. I actually am using what was channel one um, that is there. If it wasn't clear, these changes will load every time you restart Reason or your computer. They'll always map your device to the combinator that you changed. Uh, so, and also anytime you drag any combinator into the rack, your device is attached to it. To show how this works in practice, I'm gonna go ahead and this is the combinator folder. I'm dropping in a six dial combinator and I'm already attached to it. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing with my fingers. I'm dialing one, two, three, four, five, six, hitting buttons one, two, three, four, five, and six, as you would expect. The same thing would happen if I dropped in an eight in there is that the sliders one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight work. Uh, and if there's something like this, I'm gonna swap that for an eight by three. Obviously I would have only the, cause I only have 16 knobs. I wouldn't be able to get this one. One thing that I just wanna mention is that these synth layouts are funky and they're not connected properly uh, in a way that makes sense. And so you'd have to redo these or ask someone to do these. I'm just gonna show you real quick. I'm dialing knob number one, as you would expect. Now I dial number two and it, it dials this one down here. Dial number three, it goes up here and four up down here, totally out of order. So this built-in layout is not made to be connected properly with it, uh, you'd have to redo it. Uh, that's not the space of this tutorial. So I hope that you learned a lot. I hope that you enjoy this and uh, let's get out there and make some music. See you around.